boy Dokon Popper with another video. Uh, that's not my actual name, but I am low and lowly popper these days when it comes to Dokkan. I have not played in a while consistently, but Vegito Blue has brought me back. I just got Goku uh, SSBKK done, and uh, you know, I'm gonna trick out my Realm of Gods team with the easy A with Vegito Blue. I heard he's broken, I actually haven't looked at his stats yet, I haven't looked at any videos of him yet. Cause I want to, I want to awaken him and see him for myself. I have a rainbow, of course, because it's 2019, 2020, not 2017. So he's ready. Team we're rocking with. Uh, I'm gonna try to play a, a couple of these levels on here. I believe it's uh, level 26. I'm at, and I need to level 30, obviously. So Trunks works pretty well defensively. Vegito Blue, not ideal. Uh, if you go here. Look at the old bots, uh, Time Traveler. If I had double um, STR uh, trunks of my, I'd be eating right now, but unfortunately, I don't. So, you want easy A, I mean, you want extreme uh, units. Unfortunately, though, with trunks, is category skill. Uh, there's not many that are both Time Travelers and Future that are extreme. The Rose's are, I think the Zamasu's are. And then I think that's about it. The cells are all time traveler exclusive. Um, and that's unfortunately a killer. The boo is also time traveler exclusive there. Uh, he was he would have been good. So unfortunately the defense, I mean the offense is pretty much led through uh, Rose and LR Goku Black and Zamasu. Unfortunately I have a lack of everybody else but here we are right here. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, let's just do this and sometimes I wanted to do it to make this video actually valuable is kind of talk about kind of my history with Dokkan because I've done these videos now for a few times and I never really put on wax like my experience with this game uh, so I pretty much joined around it was it's pretty good uh, offense so it's pretty much around late no I would say it's around mid 2015 I think I had my first job in 20 June 2015 and that same month, I believe, I downloaded Dokkan. So, I would have pretty much joined around the same time guys like Rhyme Style and uh, Living Ichigo would have joined. And those are pretty much the first two guys you really put on Dokkan on YouTube. Uh, not maybe the first guys that put it on, but the first guys that really helped to get established in the uh, community. And I took a good break from it from around, I'd say, October, September 2015 because it just wasn't fun to me. And uh, the summon, if you play it back then, you know the summon to summon um, was horrible. Like, there was, there, there wasn't any, uh, how should I say, fun in summoning. Like, nowadays, you can summon for like, I say 200, 300 stones and probably pull like a decent unit out of it. Uh, back then, you pull, if you use 300 stones, you probably wasn't getting anything worth anything, honestly. And there's only like one or two, like, really good units. Um, on any given banner, so like you pretty much like had to pull the banner units at like I think like sub one percent the pool, uh, and it was just horrible back then. So I, I think I moved to J Pen. I like to say J. I don't know why I just say Japan. J Pen uh, for a while, uh, just to explore that option. And I I don't know if it was um if it was just circumspect circumspection like people just being you know. I think the word we're looking for is us. Uh, people just making stuff up, basically. Like, uh, it was always rumored that, that Japan had higher rates. And I think it did have higher rates for like a year or so. I think it made it even around 2016. Um, I think it definitely did have higher summoning rates, though. Because you could, like, not even without my just anecdotal evidence, you could pull, like, double those SSRs for the same amount of multis on uh, Japan than you could in global. It was just like that, and I, I mean, if you were around the time, you know. So I just continue what I was thinking about. Um, I came back around some point in like, I guess early 2016. Uh, I don't really remember like much of uh, how I did, how I did on that after 2016. Was it? It might have been. Did I join 2015? I want to say I joined 2015, but it might have been 2016. No, it was 2015. Yeah, I think it was 2015. Um, anyway, I I just remember fast forward to like my first real memories of the game. I kind of came in the uh, the throes of later 2016. Uh, 
specifically in my head, I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking Broly. Uh, I remember going to my my senior trip, my senior trip uh, to Disney, and I remember summoning for Vegito Blue. And I remember before that, when, I think it was around November. I think before that, they had either Gotenks or Broly who came out before that. And I remember Gotenks was. Let's see, how, how did it work out? I couldn't ever beat. Um, I mean, I could beat Vegito, or I couldn't beat Broly until I had Vegito. And then I don't think I could beat um, Vegito until I had Gotenks. You needed six fierce battle units to beat uh, to beat Vegito. So I had an un unawakened Vegito Blue, who was still like one of the best units in the game, um, against Broly. And it did enough. I, I barely got it, but I did eventually get Broly up. And this was physical Broly, not STR Broly. I'm thinking about. Um, but yeah, I eventually got him going, and. Uh, we got to a point in the game where you kind of had to have like Dokkan Fest units really beat some of these. Like, I, I remember Kid Boo. I think I spent ten Dragon Stones trying to clear Kid Boo at one point. Like I, back then, like I, I was I was trying to be like legit, like free to play. Like I didn't want to like pay for a mobile game. Uh, but I think I spent like I was just spending Story Stones like awfully and. I, you know, I eventually had to do it for Vegito Blue. There just, I mean, Vegito, uh, Super Saiyan Vegito, there just wasn't enough stones left in the game at that point for me to get them free to play. And I just missed, I think I spent like, I think I spent at least 300, maybe less, maybe 300, maybe more than 300. I want to say 300 like somewhere on the baseline level for a spawn of stones I spent on, on a Vegito. It was horrible. And most of these, like I said, like at least half of these like free to play stones that I have probably bought. Uh, so it was just hard as for me to rationalize it, but I was like, I had to get this unit because at that moment, the most necessary units in that game, at, in the game, in that meta were, um, let's just do this, were Super Saiyan Vegito. Uh, you had to have him, and you had to have, you're supposed to. I can't say you had to have Gogeta because I never had Gogeta until like 20, late 2017, early 2018, we could get him the Redstone. So until then, I never got Super Saiyan Gogeta, so he wasn't necessary, but I'd, okay, I'd say that he was like, the only necessary unit was Super Saiyan Gogeta, but like right behind him would be like Super Saiyan Gogeta and Easy A Super Saiyan, I mean, Easy A, but um, physical Super Saiyan Broly, he was very important as well, and um, so that's your top three, and four and five probably be Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and then uh, the, uh, the the STR Super Saiyan Bro, who was, I think, the first SSR in the game. Um, so yeah, those two are just also definitely like helpful if you could get them. Um, and I I think I pulled Gotenks, Vegito, and Broly in that order, but I have to go, I have to go back and look at that to take note. And I pulled Broly, but I couldn't awaken Broly because obviously the difficulty. Anyway, fast forward to 2017, 2017, uh, 2016, 2017, and kind of like, I think it was way more open to join YouTube at that point. I didn't really have a box that I was like proud of to join. I didn't really want to be a YouTuber, so I didn't really do all that. But, um, yeah, so I think around 2017, this is when you start seeing the, I think the second wave of YouTubers getting their stride on. Uh, I had it planned out in my head what I was referring to, but I think this would be Nanogenis, um, D Free, and uh, who else would be around that time? Um, maybe like Warden or somebody like that. Uh, Animated Muscle, I think, would be around that time as well. Uh, these are the second wave of guys that were taking over, and um, I think Rhyme Style and to a certain degree Ichigo were like the, still the biggest ones, but I think Ichigo kind of played less and less as the years progressed, and uh, he kind of became like a mentor of some of the other guys, like Animated Muscle came up under him. Um, I think he's really close with Warden. Um, and yeah, I think I think he was definitely impactful for those guys. But uh, they were they were pretty interesting guys. I think kind of some of those people kind of already fell off uh, as well. I think Nano does it a lot less. Uh, D Free still I think does it consistently, but he's always done like different games, so those YouTubers that do different mobile games kind of get lost with Dokkan sometimes. Um, 
I think Warden, I, I think Warden may not be doing as much. I know he was going through some things uh, a while back, so it's probably not even on his list. Uh, oh yeah, um, Alex the Gaming Claw, I forgot about him. I think he had Nets uh, behind Nano and maybe D3, maybe above D3, but he just kind of had his own things going around, had his, his own personal things, and animated muscle as well. I think he kind of maybe lost faith in some of the other community uh, YouTubers, so he kind of stepped away for a while. A lot of those guys are already kind of like faded out, but it's a really interesting person I was a camera at the time. And after that, I think you kind of get to maybe late 2017, early 2018, you kind of start seeing guys like D3 and, uh, and uh, who else would pop up around that time. I, I guess the truth was around that time as well. Um, the truth and D and uh, and, and uh, D Monster came around the same time. So those two were big. Uh, the truth wasn't that. The truth actually wasn't that big for a while. It's just he kind of hit like some kind of exponential growth. I remember D Monty had 100k right, and uh, the truth probably had like 70k ish, maybe somewhere around that. And he kind of caught up with D Monty in like less than two or three months, and then like he kind of hit like an exponential like parabola after that. It was like weird because like. He wasn't originally my favorite, but like I really liked a lot of the people he streamed with, like his uh I guess his crew, uh PS3 360, Kabuki, uh animated not animated. Well yeah, he was close to animated muscle coming up as well. Um But those guys uh those people, uh I'm trying to think of the other one. Vocal Pineapple, I believe his name is now. Um those guys are really cool. And I just liked his his band of people. Like one of my favorite things he always does is just streams with his crew. So he got really big. Um, a couple of like, I guess, outliers of YouTubers that came up and didn't really like, they weren't really like Dokkan streams necessarily, but like Thundershot was huge back in the day. Um, he's one I can think of right now, honestly, but he was really big at one point, but I think he got off like around 2016. 2017-ish. But yeah, Dokkan's had a really interesting uh, come up. There's been some other names around the time that I'm not remembering right now, off the top of my head, but uh, oh yeah, Goresh is probably like around the same class as the truth, maybe like a year after. Uh, he's probably the most recent big name to come up on uh, off of this. Uh, Tiger Uppercut Media. Uh, he's kind of not like thought of in that. He's not really, he collapsed with some of the guys in like the core unit but the core unit now is like kind of like the truth Goresh um a little bit of D free a little bit of nano those are like pretty much the core unit now and I don't think he kind of he he like collapsed I think he's outside of that circle right but like he's connected to him, I suppose um I know that Jinro is also kind of big uh he's kinda, I think he's more of an OG himself now that I think about it um his girlfriend streamed. I think she came up last year as well, so she'd be relatively recent. Uh, that's about it off, off the top of my head. I, if I'm missing somebody, let me know. But uh, I, it's, it's it's funny to see how that community has come up because um, it's so big now. Like like three like okay, so two three years ago, I remember this Russian guy um, beefed with D Free and the Truth, and like it, that was like the crux of like the community for a while like that was the biggest news that happened um or then like animated muscle had like his i guess problems or whoever else he had a problem with or the gaming cloth falling out like those things that happened were like pillars of the community uh because of how you know it was just so close it wasn't as big as it is now but now it's like guys that came out off of dokkan have like a million or close to a million string uh followers now um making ridiculous amounts of money and stuff like that so it's kind of hard now to like really yeah i think i think you have like segmented communities now like i think there's they still are connected to a certain degree because i mean news is what news is everybody has the same news sources everybody's the same private server sources so it's kind of like still connected to a certain degree but i don't know i think it's a um, oh yeah somebody like um Final Flash Vegeta or Flash Final Vegeta, like just just like one-off guys that kind of came in and out of the community. They were they were cool. Uh, I used to have a lot more fun with Dokkan back in the day. I've been playing for five years now, obviously, so like I'm a little bit more worn out. But 
I like when uh, people like that used to exist. Just guys that just made stuff fun. And it wasn't about like stats and numbers. It's kind of just like about putting on a show. Uh, I feel like there's not a lot of that left in the community, but like the big thing everybody cares about now is like who's doing the most damage, who's you know, it, it's not even damage, it's just about who's like the most like different unit than everybody else like, who's the next Killing Khalifler, who's the next I don't know, um LR Rose, like it's it, it's it's more about the game than it is about the, the personalities I suppose uh, but yeah, that's just my general history with Dokkan uh, I could cut out right here. I guess I'm trying to show the difficulty of this. I'm on level 29, so I might as well finish it up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, for the, I wanted to make this be like a big discussion with everybody else because, um, there's a lot of people in the community that are OGs. I, I know that some of them probably have fallen off since then, but there's a lot of people that really did come up, um, and, and, you know, see how this has grown. I'd love to have some of those people watch this video kind of you know tell me where i'm wrong tell me where you know they can relate etc etc because i mean I, I don't know i used to love dokkan like communities like the facebook communities or like you know twitter hype or uh, you know reddit um however it may be i kind of i kind of have to ingest less dokkan media so i can still play it like i can't just watch dokkan for hours on end anymore without like kind of being sick of it and like to put it down for a couple days uh but one thing i did back in the day is play like a variety of games like i used to play bleach i used to play um naruto uh i i'd rotate out games so it, i could stay fresh that's really the biggest thing you have to do i think even now it's like play different games like i know someone like the truth like money aside i know he loves dokkan but like he probably gets like absolutely sick of it when he, whenever he gets off camera and i mean that's only reasonable like it's it's just not that fun when you play that many hours into it um and i mean there's only so much you do in the game like i think bleach was always my favorite um gacha game because of the um the gameplay engine they had allowed you to do so much and you could you could put as much time to it as you want you could do auto or you could actually go in and do all the aoe's the, the clicking all that stuff um naruto is kind of the same way but the, the the learning curve for naruto is just so much more i guess extensive than with other games uh you have to put a lot more time like, i still know i don't play it any, at all really anymore but I still understand like how you really like what's the what's the boost like like with, 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 with this game we have the passives and we have certain stats work a certain way but like with blazing you have like okay so this is this makes you go faster when you load up a uh, pvp or this makes them their attack go down but it's not worth the same way it was just hard to understand uh that game uh not to say it wasn't like fun, like it, it was fun moments, but I feel like the learning curve is just too much. And then the mode, like the menus weren't like optimized like the same way as maybe a Dokkan or you know something like that. So I, I just really couldn't get into it long term. I think I made three different efforts to try to get into Blazing, but it just didn't pan out. Um, the anniversary units they had there basically like LRs. I only wanted to get some of those, but I think I got the Sasuke, but I didn't get the Naruto. So, uh, I don't really know what to make of that, but, yeah, I don't know, Dokkan's in an interesting place right now where, like, they're, like, Dragon Ball Super doesn't appear to be coming back anytime soon, um, the anime, I don't think people, I think, I don't think there's enough want from people outside the community for the anime to come back, I don't think the anime did well in Japan, um, at least as I was told back in the day when it was, like, going off the air, it didn't do very well in Japan, uh, the manga is doing pretty good, I think, in general, but I don't think this game puts any stock into the manga. Uh, and just to talk about this, this, this for a second, having the, the Rosé, um, 
LR Rose and Zamasu healing is just amazing. They they do so much for this this team. You could really run this team for like another 10, 20 levels because of how much their healing does. The only thing about it is if you get unlucky and have like say LR Rose and Zamasu they super like they just did. They take pretty substantial damage, but they always give great back. And uh, mine has I think two dudes with third um, in my box. I haven't put it in because I just don't feel like it. But that's about it for me. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know it's pretty long, but you know I, I had fun doing this. Uh, I can't wait to get this guy awakened. Uh, let's see. So if you did this, what would to give it? What would it put him at? So this is him fully awakened, as I believe. So it'd be super class, key plus four, and attack and defense plus eighty. Uh, final economy on high stream, of course. Great raise attack and defense one turn causes immense damage to enemy. So I believe that stacks right. Okay, so if you do one super, that's a greatly raise. You do another super, that's a greatly raise. You do another super, blah blah blah. Uh, so I mean that's pretty crazy. And this is doing improved passive. Attack and defense plus 40% at start of turn. Great chance of launching up to two additional attacks, and each of which has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. Damage received from normal attacks minus 40%, and counters with tremendous power. So you compare that to, to this boy right here. Uh, healing did cause immense damage, which obviously that's a massive jump. Um, and he only mitigated for 40%, and he didn't have the attack plus, I believe it was 40. Attack and defense plus 40 start of turn. So I could see this Vegito doing like, uh, if you were to super, uh, like let's say you super three turns, and then like you started getting some counters in after the supers, he could put out like, what, 5 million, 6 million, 6.5 million, like any given turn. I mean, after all of this uh, counters and supers, he could do crazy like in those um in those SBRs or like just events where you face more than one opponent. He could put out some crazy like damage. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to run around with gods with him and SSBKK Easy Eight. I'll be looking to do a um some kind of video like that uh with those guys all going out. But hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, peace.